here's how we should respond to Israel knowing what we know. We should pray for them. We should be people of prayer for the nation of Israel. Here's what I know. Not everything that Israel does politically today is correct or is even righteous, but it doesn't matter because they're in unbelief. This is not a political statement. We need to be able to see through the eyes of faith and deal specifically as people that know we're engaged in a battle, not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Isaiah 62, which is far and away one of the most beautiful prophetic pictures of what God is going to do in Israel in the future, says this in verse number six. It says, on your walls, O Jerusalem, I have set watchmen all the day and all the night, and they shall never be silent. You who put the Lord in, re in remembrance, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a praise in all the earth. So Israel is coming up on its 75th anniversary. May 14th will be its 75th anniversary. And if you don't know much about how Israel was birthed as a nation, it's a miracle that's worth looking at in 1948. The first nation on the face of the earth to recognize Israel as a nation was the United States of America. President Truman recognized Israel as a sovereign nation and other nations continued and followed in suit. What's interesting is that at the same time, all the surrounding nations, Arab Islamic nations, declared war on Israel. 1967, Israel made a preemptive strike against all the surrounding nations. And those surrounding nations and political and even religious entities still threaten Israel. Israel is at its most critical hour ever right now. It's facing five major challenges all at the same time. First challenge is this. Iran is within days of achieving nuclear missile weapons. Days. And here's what they intend to do with it. I know that some people are like, oh, Iran just wants to have peace with Israel. Now listen, this is from the deputy commander of operations for their military. His name is Abbas Nilforashun. He says, Iran has encircled Israel from all four sides. Nothing will be left of Israel once we achieve nuclear capability. Doesn't sound like peace talks to me. So right now, their first challenge is Iran is days away, maybe weeks away from getting nuclear capability. And they've already declared, if we get it, we will wipe Tel Aviv off the face of the earth. The second challenge that they have is that they are surrounded on all sides by terrorist organizations that are hell-bent on their destruction. Hamas controls the, the Gaza. You've got Islamic Jihad that is within the land of the West Bank, and you have Hezbollah that's up in the north and Lebanon and Syria with constant missile launching into the cities, the villages of Israel. And then on top of that, you have very uniquely in Israel now, they're at a, you think America politically is polarized. Israel right now is in the middle of what many say in the next couple of months could turn in to an internal civil war between the orthodox religious right and the very moderate or liberal left. And they're being pulled apart politically. That's happening inside. And then on top of it, you have the UN Security Council members wanting to impose massive terrorists on Israel and declare it an apartheid state. So you've got all these challenges that are taking place all right now during the month of May. So all that is to let you know that we as a church are going to participate in something that has never happened in human history. In the month of May, from May 7th until May 28th, there is a prayer focus called the Isaiah 62 Prayer Initiative. And here's what it is. It's 10 million, everybody get that number, 10 million intercessors around the world through thousands of different churches and ministries in every nation of the earth. 10 million, though, have committed to pray and fast 
for the nation of Israel for 21 days in the month of May to pray for their protection, to pray that their eyes would be open to see Jesus, to pray that God begins to shift and draw Israel back to themselves, to pray that the promises of God are fulfilled. It, Israel is the apple of God's eye. His eye is on it, and the days we're living in are urgent. And 10 million, think about 10 million watchmen on the wall, Isaiah 62, praying and calling God into remembrance of his promises over the nation of Israel, praying for our Jewish uh, friends to receive Jesus, Yeshua, as their Messiah, praying for grace and supplication to be poured out. Imagine what that will look like. That's never happened in 2,000 years of church history. Mike Bickle, who's a friend of this house, was talking about saying that to a Jewish friend, and the Jewish friend who's not a believer said, with tears in her eyes, he's like, you are gonna pray for us for 21 days? Church, you know what that does? It's gonna melt away. It's gonna melt away the ancient, the ancient stigma that we as the church are opposed to Israel. And we're gonna pour out the love of Jesus's body, the church, all over Israel, standing on the walls in the place of intercession and letting them know you can count on us. Because Romans chapter 11 says the way that Israel is going to be changed is they're going to be provoked by how God has been good and blessed the Gentile church. In other words, our love for them is going to provoke them to take a second look at Jesus. And so we're going to participate in the prayer room downtown for 21 days. We're going to be praying for Israel. And we want you to be a part of it. We want you to lean into it. If you want to pray about something that's on God's wish list, you know, oftentimes we're like, God, here's my prayer list. You know what this is? This is us saying, God, what's on your prayer list? And Jesus said, Israel. And us saying, guess what? My gift to you this year is I'm going to invest some time in prayer for the people that are on your heart. And you know what God will do? When we bless Israel, God will bless us.